You know, Easter is Jesus bearing the wrath of God and therefore condemnation of God on behalf of us. And it's no easy for Jesus because he is eternally, eter eternally, um, eternal fellowship with God the Father at the same level. He's co-equal with God the Father. And yet for him to come to such a state of rejection and condemnation is 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 beyond the world is is unbelievable so if christians can grasp this then is it, it would be a big shame on earth now if non-christians those of you who are listening to this you are not christian you just imagine with me for a moment to the 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 anguish that christ went through so let me read this this is Matthew 27, 45 onwards. Now from the sixth hour, which is noon, 12 noon, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour, which is 3 p.m. So what Jesus was hanging on the cross, about to be, to, 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 to die, at precisely 12 noon, there was darkness over all the land. Do you see the contrast of that? It's supposed to be the brightest part of the day, 12 noon. And yet went completely dark. It's a solar eclipse for three hours. This is precisely the moment. There was literally for hours before Christ passed away. See, this is already as supernatural. This is numinous, mysterious, supernatural events in a cosmic level is happening. God showing his wrath towards, towards the man. Jesus. At about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lemma sapatani. That's in Aramaic, which means, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, this is, let me read the ESV Study Bible commentary. Eli, Eli, lemma sapatani. The last two words are Aramaic. The everyday language spoken by Jesus. And the first two could be either Aramaic or Hebrew. Some of the most profoundly mysterious words in the entire Bible that was uttered by Jesus. That's like literally like one minute before he died. He called out to God the Father, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why? This is a really deep, this is a very, very, very mysterious language the most, one of the most mysterious thing in the whole bible is in some of the most profoundly mysterious words in the entire bible in some sense jesus had to be cut off from the favor of and fellowship with the father that had been his eternally because he was bearing the sins of his people and therefore enduring god's wrath it's something that god has been enjoying and worshiping you know jesus had been enjoying and having the profound fellowship, the intimacy with Christ, uh, with God the Father, for all eternity, and all of a moment, all of, all of a sudden, at that moment, it's going to end at that point. But it's going to be picked up three days later. But at that moment, the eternity is going to come to a clock that stops clicking. Wow. See, because he was bearing the sins of his people and therefore enduring God's wrath. So that should give us a jerk, a totally jolt, jolting effect, effect that will be jolted up to know what God went through. What did Jesus, the Son of God, went through for us, to save us, to redeem us. Now, let me read some of the scriptures. Isaiah 53, verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We turn everyone to his own. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The Lord has laid on him the sins of, of uh, all of us. Habakkuk 1, 13. Okay, so let's keep that. Romans 3, 25. Whom good God put forward is a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness. Because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. 
So, Second uh, Corinthians five twenty one. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You see that. Galatians three thirteen. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for him. For it is written, curses everyone who's who is hang on a tree. So Christ became a curse on behalf of us. You know, the Son of God took our sin and became a curse before God, and God cursed him. And he he was blacked out. He, for three days he died. First John 2 2. Okay. So and yet in Psalm 22 1, Jesus quoted exactly the same words from Psalm 22 1. So Psalm 22 is a prophetic word pointing to Christ. Of the Good Friday, what happened to him? You know, that was already a prophetic word prophesying what's gonna to happen to Jesus. Psalm 22 verse 1 says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? You see that? Nothing happened by coincidence. Even the precise words used by Christ in many occasions are the exact words from the Old Testament. Because all the Old Testament, the, the, the high points of the Old Testament are all about Christ. All point to Him. Okay, and he expresses faith, calling on, My God, my God. Surely he knows why he's dying. For this was the purpose of his coming to earth. Matthew 16, 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Jesus already knew. Jesus talked about it all the time. And surely his cry, uttered with a loud voice, is expressing not bewilderment at his plight, but witness to the bystanders and through them to the world that he was experiencing God forsakenness, not for anything in himself, but for the salvation of others. Jesus was forsaken on the cross. And Jesus questioned God the Father, why have you forsaken me? He was forsaken because of us. Jesus, um, Jesus' torment, despite his anticipation of ending Gethsemane, was surely inconceivable in advance. So there's, there's just, just so much intensity of anguish that Jesus went through on the cross. Even so much so, the world went dark for three hours on the brightest part of the day, on Good Friday, on Passover. He is the Passover lamb. Amen.